What's up everybody? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. After the nerf to stasis shards and overshields, it's become pretty difficult to have a strong stasis build that's still viable in in-game content, and that's left most warlocks resorting to either the Osmium Monty or the Stack as their only go-to exotic options when running stasis builds. But today we intend on shifting that paradigm. I've put together a surprisingly powerful stasis build that features an unexpected and underrated exotic that will provide you with superior levels of survivability while giving you some really interesting and insanely powerful new abilities to add to your arsenal. So what we've got going on here is a combination of the Vesper of Radius, the Frost Pulse Stasis Aspect, and a couple of new seasonal artifact mods. This all collides together to make some amazing synergy that will give you a build that's perfect to take into any Lost Sector, any Dungeon, any Raid, Mission, or Nightfall at any difficulty. The Vesper of Radius is an exotic chess piece that grants the Planetary Torrent Intrinsic Trait. When at least three enemies are within 15 meters, you'll gain a bonus to the regeneration rate of your class ability. This will ultimately provide a substantial increase in how often you're able to cast your Rift. This starts at a 250% increase, but it tops out at 1500, but that's when there's at least 6 enemies within that radius. Along with an increased regeneration rate of class ability, the Vesper of Radius gives you the ability to weaponize your Rift. When a Rift is dropped, an Arc Shockwave will be created dealing out 300 points of base damage. This is going to hit any target that's within 8 meters, and every 5 seconds, a new shockwave will get projected out, dealing 200 points of base damage. So much like Titans with the Syntheseps, the Vesper of Radius works best when you play more aggressively. But even if you're not playing aggressively, there's never a shortage of rank and file enemies like Thrall, and Warhounds or Unstoppable Champions that are going to push right up on you, which is going to make the Vesper of Radius viable no matter what your playstyle is and no matter what subclass you're using. But when the Vesper of Radius is used on a stasis build with the Frost Pulse aspect, this weaponized rift gets a massive boost to its performance. This aspect will cause any enemy that's within 8.5 meters to become frozen whenever you drop that rift. To those unaware, once an enemy is frozen, they will receive 10% additional damage from any special or heavy weapon or ability. Primary weapon damage, on the other hand, is actually less effective against frozen enemies, dealing 5% less damage. Uncharged melee attacks will also deal 120% bonus damage against frozen enemies, which works out really well with the Vesper since this also provides a short bonus to your lunge distance, giving you an extra 2.5 meters on any follow-up melee attack. The Frost Pulse aspect synergizes exceptionally well with the Vesper of Radius, because any frozen enemy is going to get instantly shattered by the shockwaves that your rift will create, which will stun unstoppable champions and delay barrier champions from popping their shields. And since you're still standing inside your rift, you're almost completely protected from any attacks that these enemies were attempting to make. With how we have the rest of this build set up, Along with the artifact mods that we'll talk about here soon, you'll have unparalleled uptime of that rift energy, so you'll be able to spam these rifts all over the place, giving you and your allies an abundance of little safe havens within the mist of battle. On top of the frost pulse aspect, we're also using glacial harvest. This is going to generate stasis shards whenever we defeat slowed or frozen enemies. Now there is a limit to how many shards that you can create and you can only make 6 every 10 seconds. Intrinsically, these shards will provide bonus melee energy, giving us 12.5% for each shard. But that's not why we're creating these shards. With the use of the Whisper of Rhyme Fragment, those shards are going to provide health, and whenever our health is full, they'll provide an overshield. Each small shard grants 5 points of HP, with larger ones granting 35 points, and the overshield will register in at 50 points. It's not as beneficial as it once was, but in combination with the other fragments that we're using, it is the best way to keep yourself alive when running just about any stasis build. 
And to add to what Whisper of Rhyme does for us, Whisper of Chains will reduce the damage that we take when we're near frozen and slowed enemies, or stasis crystals. This will grant a 40% bonus to our damage resistance, which is something that we'll be able to maintain as long as we're engaged in combat, since we'll be able to keep enemies frozen and create a ton of stasis crystals. And to improve the uptime of that rift energy even more, we're using Whisper of Refraction. This grants between 9% and 50% bonus class ability energy that gets restored with each frozen enemy that we defeat. This will be based on the enemy's rank level, with rank and file enemies providing the least amount and bosses providing the most. With what Vesper of Radius provides, along with Whisper of Refraction, you could see that rift energy coming back in just mere seconds. And to make those Frost Pulse shockwaves even more efficient, we're using Whisper of Fissures. This creates additional area damage whenever frozen enemies shatter, whether that's because of one of our abilities or because of a weapon. This will hit any enemy within 8 meters, and it will be triggered from each enemy who gets shattered. Each shattering effect will cause an additional 25 points of base damage to each enemy, allowing us to put up a lot of extra damage against our targets. And with our choice in artifact mods, we'll be able to freeze more enemies than we could ever imagine, create a ton of extra stasis crystals, and even cause more damage when frozen enemies shatter. We're using Dragon's Bite, so whenever we break an opponent's shield with a stasis weapon, they have a chance of becoming frozen, and by wearing seasonal armor, you'll increase the chance of this happening. With the use of Pillar of Ice, when frozen enemies are defeated, stasis crystals will be created, and if we keep those crystals up, we'll be able to maintain that bonus damage resistance. Because of Hail the Storm, crystals and frozen enemies are going to create bonus shatter damage. When an enemy shatters, they'll deal a bonus amount of 12.5% damage to any enemy that's within range. When a crystal gets shattered, it'll deal 28% additional shatter damage. And this does get stacked on top of Whisper of Fissures. And when crystals shatter, tiny ice shards are going to release out and track down nearby enemies, causing those enemies to become slowed and to take additional damage. These three artifact mods are really going to amplify everything that we've already got going on here with the Vesper of Radius and the Frost Pulse aspect. Now that we've addressed class tree and artifact choices, let's talk about what armor and armor mods that we'll need to use with this build. In terms of character stats, resilience has got to be a priority whenever you're going into PvE content, especially in game content. Recovery will be just as much of a priority as it dictates the base cooldown of your rift energy and it controls how quickly your health will begin to regenerate. Beyond that, discipline would be the other character stat that I would focus towards in order to improve the regeneration rate of our grenades. When it comes to our armor mods, our goal is to complement our use of the Vesper of Radius, so we've got a lot of different mods that are going to either directly generate class ability energy or they're going to create orbs. We've got Siphon mods and the Reaper mod to generate those orbs, and those orbs will give us armor charges. And since we're currently using a mix of solar and stasis weapons, I've activated the Thermodynamic Siphon mod, which is also available in the Seasonal Artifact. With the armor charges that are generated from these mods, we'll be able to take advantage of the benefits of Utility Kickstart. Whenever we have armor charges, and cast our rift. Those armor charges will be consumed to provide class ability energy. With three armor charges and one utility kickstart mod, that would provide us with 34% class ability energy instantly. But we could increase that with the use of more utility kickstart mods, the charged up chest mod or the stacks on stacks boots mod, giving us a maximum of 45%. We're also using a couple of bolstering detonation gloves mods and a focusing strike mod to create bonus class ability energy. With two bolstering detonation mods, we'll get 17% class ability energy whenever we hit enemies with a grenade. And with one focusing strike mod, we'll get 12% energy whenever using our melee. 
Along with the Recuperation Boots mod, which is going to give us 70 points of health back whenever we collect an orb, we're also using the Insulation mod, so whenever we collect those orbs, we'll also gain 4% class ability energy, which isn't a lot, but it's definitely going to add up as you collect those orbs. Now that we've broken down all of our class tree, artifact, and armor choices, let's talk about weapon loadouts. And there's a couple that I like to use based on the situation and activity that I'm participating in. Any legendary weapon that we use, we want to make sure that it has a weapon trait or origin trait like Wellspring or Classy Contender so that we can have additional class ability energy getting generated. If those weapons are also stasis, it'll be great to have traits like Headstone or Chill Clip or Cold Steel so that we can have additional methods of slowing and freezing our enemies. When it comes to exotics, my go-to options are the Conditional Finality Shotgun and the Vergless Curve Bow. The Conditional Finality is just an absolute beast, and if you can maintain special ammo, it's going to work out beautifully with this Vesper of Radius Frost Pulse build. And the Vergless Curve is a lot more dynamic than most players think. It's not going to do as much damage as the Wish Ender, for example, but it will continuously provide you with stasis crystals that you can use to inflict bonus damage or give yourself makeshift cover on top of the damage resistance that they'll provide. And when it's time to suit up for a DPS loadout, we're going with the Aegir Scepter. Our super is at best a mid-tier ad clear super, but that won't matter since Aegir Scepter will deal 80% bonus damage as it consumes that super energy. Aegir's Scepter, along with a Cold Comfort Rocket Launcher or a Linear Stasis Fusion Rifle, like the Reed's Regret, will be an absolutely amazing combination to take into any raid or dungeon boss battle. Any of these weapon loadouts, along with the Frost Pulse Vesper Stasis build, is truly going to be an impressive combination that you're going to be able to use throughout this season. So if you've never experienced the joy of this amazing Warlock build, then it is about damn time. And with that said, I wish you all the best of luck throughout the rest of this season. Let me know your thoughts about the Vesper of Radius and this Frost Pulse Stasis build down in the comments below. If you need to make a quick copy of today's build, you can do so by hitting up the Destiny Item Manager link that's down in the description. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated, and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian, just starting your journey, or a battle-hardened veteran, just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link in the description below, and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.